Hello. Hare Krishna. Everyone on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. So a very warm welcome to you all. Uh, a special apology to everyone on Instagram <laughs> since uh, I haven't been able to share with you in a long time. It's been a few months now since I've posted anything on Instagram. Um, been a lot going on. My dad passed away, our father, four months ago. And then we, I went to India and there's a lot going on. <laughs> and now we're in a full lockdown in England. So my plate's a little bit full with emotions and physical activity going on. Hey, Hare Krishna, everyone on Facebook. So please forgive me and um, thank you for bearing with us. Hope you're all doing well. Um, so today we're going to talk about tapasya. This is part two. I've already posted something on Facebook a few days ago. So for Facebook, it'll be a little bit of a recap. But I really wanted to share more because I feel like Tapasya is a very misunderstood um, word. <laughs> we don't really like to, you know, undergo any discomfort or austerity in life generally. But I feel like if we unlock this mystery of Tapasya, it can transform our life in so many ways. So uh, I just wanted to share more about it because there's so much more to share. <laughs> If you have questions, you can post them at the end because I can't see what's going on. My, uh, but maybe after about 20 minutes, we can take some questions. But uh, just a quick recap about what we spoke about last in the last uh, little talk. Tapasya, what is it? It's a Sanskrit word, tapa. Tapa means heat, right? It's this energy, this power that we can tap into by by doing some austerities, by sharpening our sword, <laughs> uh, like burning away this kind of energy that we bring into our actions and intentions, and we burn away this fog. We talked about lifting the fog of confusion and whatever we're feeling, this despair or hopelessness, so that we can see clearly and think clearly, understand clearly, so that we can act the way we want to, the way we know we're supposed to. So there's a disconnect we spoke about last time between what we know and what we do, because we can't seem to find the clarity and strength to do the things we know we're supposed to do. So the things we know we are supposed to do, that is generally uh, in, this, in this realm of dharma, we know we're supposed to do certain things. I'm a mother, I know I'm supposed to look after my kids and my family and be a positive source of inspiration for them, right? And so everyone has a different dharma. Everyone has a slightly different dharma. But the strength to do it comes from this word tapa. Because otherwise, um, the sword is dull. Otherwise, there's too much fog and confusion to actually act on it. Why is there fog? Why does the sword become dull? Why does our existence feel like it's weak? Why does it feel like there's uh, all this fog, right? Um, it's like anything. If we don't use our instruments for the intended purpose, it loses its power. Like in lockdown, uh, our car battery died because we're not using the car um, or a muscle. You don't use the muscle, over time it will atrophy. So similarly, if we're not using our cells, the purpose of our soul, it has a purpose. We're here for a very specific reason. If we're not using it for that reason, it will start uh, degrading into lower and lower consciousness, into the consciousness that we create. So our consciousness as a human uh, self-aware uh, spirit soul it's very specific it is meant for self-awareness and this kind of self-connection self-realization they say self-actualization that is actually what we're here for right we're here as humans 
with a really great sense of intellect and self-awareness that animals do not have. Uh, so it's described in the Vedic texts and this ancient wisdom that animals, they do this, you know, the, uh, the four things, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. That's what all animals do. And they enjoy those same, um, that's the realm of their enjoyment. So if, if our realm of activities and enjoyment are the same, then we are remaining in that consciousness of, that lower consciousness. We're not really doing what our instrument was intended to do. And therefore, it, it's becoming dull. Our, ex, our, our experience of reality is become dull. Does that make sense? We we're not tapping into the power uh, that we actually have, our potential. Um, and we, the only way to do that is to actually undergo some austerity. It sounds counterintuitive sometimes. We have this negative connotation about taking on some willing austerity. We don't want to do that. We want to enjoy life, but we don't want to do uh, the hard work for it sometimes. Um, right? But they are counterintuitive. If you don't, we know that in even in career goals and material goals, uh, if we want something, you've got to do something for it. <laughs> the hard work and success and achieving the goals is hand in hand. That, that's common sense, right? We, we understand that. So, we, but we're not able to connect the dots to the next level, which is our, the hard work for the soul. What does that actually mean? That's tapasya. The tapasya is what the soul, the spirit, can um, actually tap, tap into. The results of austerity is directly going to be felt by the soul, by the spirit, because actually it is going to sharpen and give us the power, gives the, the soul the power to express and um, act, right? So in essence, any kind of willing self-sacrifice, penance and austerity we take on with the intention that we want, we want to tap into our greatest power, the source of our greatest um, strength. That is called tapasya. Only that can be defined as tapasya. Everything else is kind of just hard work, right? We can actually see there are two different um, realms of tapasya. Hard work in the material realm. We want to achieve something, we have to work hard for it. So what the actions that we do with the intention um, determines the result, right? So if we work with the intention that I, I want to achieve this material goal, we will, we will achieve that material goal. But now the difference is to make the goal spiritual, make the goal spiritual so that it can actually trans, uh, transform and, and reach the level of the spirit because that is where things, um, the rewards are lasting. That is where the rewards are going to not be permanent because we know that when we achieve things, somehow we're still not happy. So if you have a vision of manifesting something, um, that's still on an external realm. Does that make sense? Right? We're talking about um, careers, making money, um, relationships. These are all very valid goals that we have. Um, and we, we, we have ways to manifest that in our life. But if we want to tap into, I would say, lasting joy, it must be something deeper than that because things and people and, you know, success doesn't necessarily give us um, that joy or that lasting experience of satisfaction. It must come from within, right? That the source of lasting peace, we, we, can, we, we, we have an idea that that has to come from within. We define it from within um, by our understanding of who am I. Um, if we are constantly depending on others to define that for us, we're going to be at their mercy and we can't control that. So that's, uh, we know that that's not, that's not going to work. I hope, <laughs> I hope we know that because it's not going to work. Uh, we, we must 
must tap into a deeper sense of identity, that we are the spirit. And what does the spirit need? So uh, the point is for the spirit to manifest something, this tapasya is absolutely essential because, because um, for self-realization, to understand the soul and our purpose here, to, un- to, to allow the knowledge to, we talked about it last time as well, to allow the knowledge to become wisdom and reality in our lives, we need to be powerful within. We need to have the inner strength to, um, to, right, to understand it. So I hope that is making a little bit of sense. We're, we're, we're trying to connect the dots between the power of manifestation and distinguishing different intentions from different results. For example, you know, we have there's this different descriptions of, of us as, as humans, depending on our inclinations. You can either be a Brahmana or a Kshatriya or a Vaishya or Shudra, right? We, we don't have that class system anymore, but we already have, we, we, we can tap into our inclinations, whether we're academic or more of a physical type of role that we, you know, that we believe in and act upon. Um, so depending on what tapasya we undergo, the brahmana, the tapasya for the intellectuals generally is to try to, um, you know, reign in the senses, to control the mind, to analyze, and to really understand. That's the tapasya for a brahmana. And um, the reward for the brahmana is therefore, is kind of a little bit closer to the spirit because we're, we're the, the tapasya is on a deeper level. Whereas for the kshatriya or the protecting class, like a soldier or you know, military men or someone who's police, they're, they're trying to protect and serve. Um, for them, it's mo- maybe more on a physical level. We have to be strong so that we can protect. And so that austerity is on a physical level. And the reward will be accordingly. It will, um, you'll enjoy good health and <laughs> so on and so forth. But the tapasya of the brahmana re- yields this inner power that back in the day they could give a shrap. They could, <laughs> their words would become so powerful that whatever they said would manifest. So this power of manifestation was on a much deeper level for the brahmana because the, the tapasya was in a much deeper level. I don't know if I'm making sense. I hope I am. But, hope, you know, bear with me. For the kshatriya, if, if our tapasya is on a bodily platform, we're exercising every day, you know, we're uh, eating healthy. So, so that's on a bodily level. The tapasya is on a bodily level. Then the reward of it will be accordingly um, deep, meaning we'll benefit on a bodily level, not on a spirit level. And then maybe we might uh, be more inclined to business, making money, career oriented for serving, kind of serving the self as opposed to serving uh, society a little bit more personally oriented that's fine you know making money we're exercising the mind and the intellect how can I make more money how can I um, create how can I build how can I and the reward will be um, according to that tapasya that we're undergoing so every tapasya every kind of austerity and hard work that we do yields a specific result now the shudra class is the working laborer class, which is pretty much all of us now, all of us that have nine to five jobs, they're classified as the Kshudra, the Shudra class because we, we use our, our you know, b- body, mind, intellect, and, you know, we work. We work. We're the, we're the working class. And we, you know, the gain is money. So I, I, if, you can, if you can notice the progression of reward, we've started off with if you're exercising if you're doing tapasya on the level of the mind and intellect uh, and the spirit for something higher, the reward will be something higher. If you're using your mind, intellect, and body for material gain like money, the reward will be according, um, accordingly beneficial. So the point is, does money last? You know, it does. It's very essential for us to survive and all that. But does it... Um, does it provide lasting results? We want to analyze also the intention and the, the effect. Uh, is it long-term? So 
we want to tap deeper in with the intention. We want to be able to make sure that the tapasya we are doing is going to yield a reward that will actually affect our true self in the long run. For that tapasya, for that tapasya, we want to be able to um, be more on the intellectual level and reign in the senses, control the mind, um, and that will accordingly give us that inner power to strengthen the spirit so that we can act um, on that level. I hope I'm making sense. I probably should have written this down a bit more. <laughs> if you have any questions, please continue to post them here. Let me just see. There are a few stories. There are a few stories in the Bhagavat, Srimad Bhagavat Mahapuran, that um, describe the benefit of the tapasya. So maybe those will be a bit more helpful. Like if you remember Hiranya Kashipu, you know that Hiranya Kashipu and Prahlad Maharaj, ka jo, the, the, the example of Prahlad, according to the Bhagavat, according to this ancient Vedic wisdom, Prahlad was a young boy and his father, uh, Hiranya Kashipu, underwent so much tapasya because he wanted immortality. And um, he did thousands of years of it, and he, and he actually almost became immortal. <laughs> uh, you may not believe in all this, but it's an example of what you can achieve through that austerity. So tapasya, but on that level, you can do ex physical exercise and um, you know austerity, for, for really deep austerity, and gain that power and have that result. Um, but then there's also the story of Dhruva. Dhruva was a young boy. He was supposed to, uh, he, he desired to, uh, his father was a king, and he wanted to, to be the next king. He wanted to be respected and accepted as the prince. But that was a complicated story, and he wasn't. <laughs> he was rejected. So he went in and thought, uh, he was told, that if you go and do this austerity, you chant this mantra, you will get this benefit. And he does it, and he's, he's, he's awarded that benefit. He, he chants this mantra, and, um, and you know, Narada Muni comes and instructs him to chant the mantra, and he actually has darshan of the Supreme Person. He, has, he does so much austerity, you know, he controls his breath, stops breathing. So this willing sacrifice, this willing penance that we're taking on, he did it, and he achieved he became the king of a whole, you know, planet. But he, but the realization for him was that this material thing that he was hankering was nothing in comparison to uh, this much deeper uh, um, thing that we all need. This realization that actually, I, who am I? What the connection with his, with the self, connection with the divine, and. Um, the love that can be attained and, and tapped into. That's a next level. That's just absolutely, um, it cannot compare to this material benefit of becoming a king and owning something and success and all that. So that's really quite profound that you, we can, on a daily basis, our actions are specifically geared for certain uh, goals. And we're manifesting that on a daily basis. We're, we were doing that. We're working and we're manifesting money. We're, we're uh, exercising and we're mani manifesting good health. But if we want to manifest peace within, from within, joy from within, then our, um, then our tapasya must be in line and must have the right intention. Um, so how do we control, how do we... Um, then how do we tap into what, are, what is my goal and what should my intention be and what should my actions be? If I can only speak about um, the spirit, if, if the goal is connection with the spirit, then like we spoke about last time as well, connecting and controlling uh, the mind and, and cutting down on all the, the stimulus that's coming in through the senses. That is key. We must must um, kind of limit that. 
not just eating whatever we want or have, however much we want. We talked about all this last time. To limit the amount we eat, that's a tapasya. The limit, to limit what kind of uh, vibration we're, we're listening to. Is it positive? Is it spiritual? That's a tapasya. What are we watching? What vi vibration are we um, putting into our consciousness? That's a tapasya. So becoming mindful of what each sensory input is going to manifest, um, that is going to be the journey. So connecting our daily sacrifices with the desired result. Uh, I hope I made myself clear. <laughs> um, if there are any questions, Hindi mein boliye. Sorry, Aj, you know, it's a... It's difficult for me to speak in Hindi and English. Today I'm doing English. Maybe the next one can be Hindi. So today we talked about the power of manifestation. We all have it. We all have um, an immense potential of, of manifesting whatever we desire, uh, according to karma. The beauty of, of, of tapping into uh, the spiritual manifestation is we can actually move beyond our karma because if we surrender to the divine, they take over, he takes over, Krishna takes over, and then he can then you can manifest something well beyond uh, what is actually just uh, our karmic limit. So, is there any questions? Tapasya is the key to manifesting, is the power that we that we require to manifest. Everything else can be good. We have vision boards. We have we meditate. We have positive affirmations. That's that's all helpful. But if we are not strengthening ourselves from within, we're still going to struggle to manifest. We're still going to struggle to have that power to actually act on it. I hope I made myself clear. <laughs> right. I can't see any questions as of right now because I wasn't paying attention. But if you post them later on, we can, uh, I can try to answer them. How can we stay detached while staying with family? It's mm, a good question. How can we stay detached? Uh, detachment is something different than tapasya. Tapasya, let me reiterate, is something that we take some self-sacrifice, self some kind of discomfort that we take upon ourselves. It seems like discomfort because it's not natural for us to do it because it's, we're out of practice, right? Um, it's kind of an uphill struggle because we haven't done it in a while. Once you do it regularly, like meditation, once you do it regularly, it will become easier. So tapasya is a little bit difficult in the beginning, but regular practice will ease it. It has something to do with sacrifice. We must sacrifice through our actions, through our intentions and mind. And it's really essential that we do it on a regular basis and pass that on to our children. Tapasya is good for us. It's not a negative word. Let's tap into it. That's the point of today's. <laughs> Let's embrace it in our lives. That's what I wanted to say. So detachment, coming back to that question, that's different than tapasya. Now, detachment is very tricky. I could do a whole talk about it because um, we don't want to falsely detach and renounce. That can be very dangerous, especially if you have a family, like you were saying. Um, the tapasya of family life is to actually give ourselves 100% to our relationships, to our children, to our husband, wife, um, in-laws, parents. These relationships, they all take work. That is the tapasya, that we give ourselves to um, the service. Um, so detaching from it isn't necessarily the way to go if you have a family. Detaching from the results and expectations, that is something every spiritualist aspires for. Uh, we all must detach from the results, detach from the idea that this is my, you know, detachment must be deeper than just giving it up externally. So detachment has to do with uh, how we perceive the person that we're serving. Am I thinking this child is mine? This husband is mine? This house is mine? Um, that is a wrong concept. We, we must be thinking that actually we're just, we're just here as visitors serving the divine, right? We talked about it last time that any 
any tapas he had done without faith, without the idea of the supreme, is almost useless because it doesn't bear lasting results. So without ashraddhaya, without shraddha, Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, if we do any tapasya without faith in the supreme, we will get material results. We have that power within us to manifest, but we will not get lasting spiritual results. Um, and we won't be able to tap into lasting joy, lasting peace, lasting um, fulfillment. So that's why he says it's kind of useless. What's the point of being happy for a day or a week or a month or a, a few years? It's almost useless because it's not going to it's not going to transform our lives. We're not going to be able to tap into a much deeper source. So we must do it with faith in the divine, in the divine person. That is a source of the power. Krishna says the pamyaham aham varsham. In the last one, we say Krishna. Lord Krishna says, I am the source of this power, of this tapa, this heat, this ability in all of, all of us. We all have this ability to create and manifest. And he's the source of that. So we must have the faith and gratitude in the Supreme. Um, so as soon as we bring that concept into our action and into our sacrifice, that is actual, actually true detachment. So you asked about detachment. We don't think we are the doers. We don't think, oh, I'm so great. I am manifesting this, right? Because that's, that's, that's not true. I mean, we're doing the actions, but the power to manifest is being, we're channeling it from somewhere else. We're just a, we're just a conduit. We're just going to let it flow through us. So I hope that answered some idea of detachment. Detachment must be from our ego. Our ego should detach from the action. We should detach the um, our de detach from our um, the, the the want of uh, a specific result from desires. Detachment from that, not from people, <laughs> not from service, not from relationships. We want to really give a hundred percent. In giving, we receive, and all that. We <laughs> will. Um, Hope that answers it. I'll take one last question if anyone has it. I can't see. What is the easiest way to control our mind? By Pranjal Sharma. How can we be always in bhakti without being lusty thoughts and bad thoughts in the back of my mind? Okay. I think both of those questions are about the mind. You know, how can we control the mind? Very good question. Yeah. That's a million dollar question. How can we control the mind? We, we were talking about this with a friend yesterday, actually. That's, it's, it's almost impossible. We can't really tackle the mind, go at it um, on the level of the mind, because even Arjuna puts his hands up and says, Hey, Bhagavan, may I say, Nahi hoga. You know, he tells Krishna, I can't, I can't control the mind. It's like the wind. Who can control the wind? Um, so that shouldn't be the goal, actually. It, it's a, it's a, it is said that to treat the, the mind like a child. What do you do with a kid if he's uh, having a meltdown or a tantrum or can't focus? You distract them, <laughs> right? We distract them. Like I, I've got four kids. That's what I do. If there's, it's a, if there's a meltdown, we find out what is something that the, the child can focus on that will help him snap out of the tantrum. <laughs> So the mind is like a monkey or a child. It's completely uncontrolled. It just jumps from one thought to the next, and there's no way to control it. So if we're thinking, let's control the mind, that's the wrong way to go about it. What we can do is provide the mind a higher purpose, a higher engagement, a better distraction. That is why we do japa. We do this routine of mantra meditation because as soon as we start chanting mantra man is mind man is mind so how do we control the mind how do we free the mind is by engaging it in something more powerful something more positive something that will actually um you know be good for it and it won't even realize the mind won't even realize it's doing something that's good for it uh so Mantra, Japa, 
tapa. These are all interconnected. The greatest tapasya we can do for the soul is to engage this mind in mantra. That's why we do it. Mantra japa. And we can't, I mean, we could just chant, I am great, self-affirmations. I can do this. I'm great. I am amazing. I got the power. That's also a mantra we tell ourselves. But um, that is not going to work. It's not going to work, at least according to the Vedic wisdom, this understanding, because we are not the source of this power. We must chant the mantra that the divine is my best friend. I am a spark of the divine. I, my power is so unlimited because it comes from this divine source. Does that make sense? Our mantra should be in connection with the Supreme Person, in connection with the source of, um, of all power, all ability. Um, so, therefore, we need a mantra that's, that is connected with the Supreme. That's why we keep chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, right? It's called the Maha Mantra. Because it's, it's like, why is it called the Maha Mantra? Because it gives us exactly what we need without even asking for it. <laughs> It's like a it's like a touchstone that if you if you touch it, it will give you whatever your heart's desires. If you want money, the Mahamantra can give you money, although that shouldn't be what you're chanting for. Uh, the highest thing that the Mahamantra can award us is pure love and this deepest connection, um, extreme, you know, just this deepest sense of joy. We can't even, we don't even know it exists. Therefore, we can't ask for it. We don't ask for these things because we don't know that it exists. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we can be brave and imagine that. If we imagine it, then the Maha Mantra can give it to you. <laughs> we, we must imagine. Our vision board should be everlasting peace and joy and love and connection. If our vision board says that, we can manifest it through the Maha Mantra, through this mantra that frees the mind. That is a tapasya. That is a great tapasya because it's difficult to sit down and chant and surrender and, you know, tell the Lord, I am, I'm yours. <laughs> okay. I think, I think I may have run out of time here. Um, should we do one last one? Oh, that's not a good one here. Now I've lost it. Well, we're having a, a, a really amazing conversation on Saturday with Amarendra Prabhu. It's going to be about Mantra Jap. And he's a really, really wonderful speaker, very knowledgeable. Uh, so if you have questions about Mantra Jap, please join us on Saturday. And thank you for thank you for listening. Please do share if you found any of this useful. <laughs> I hope it made sense. Practice makes perfect, I'm hoping. I'll get better at this. Hare Krishna, have a wonderful day. And we'll see you shortly. How do I end on? Okay, how do I stop on WhatsApp? I mean, on Instagram. Oops. <laughs> I actually don't know how to stop this. Let's cancel. And could you want to end your live video? Okay, sorry. Ha, <laughs>